All right, Hayes Mig here, and uh, so in this video, I will be uh, servicing my KX100 chalk here, okay? So right here, I've got a KX100 uh, sh uh, shock from a 2004 Kawasaki KX100. Uh, this should this this video should work for a KX85 also. I think the KX85 have a very similar shock. So what I'm trying to do is install the KX shock on my KLX140. Okay, um, and the reason so I wasn't gonna service it when I got it, but it's from 2004. Okay, and it's 2021 right now. So if it, this shock has never been serviced, it's six about 17 years old now so you figure mm, yeah it's probably a good time to do a service on it okay it's not leaking at all okay but i did notice there's like air in it yeah, and a lot of fluid comes out of it when you when you go in and out but but yeah uh so all i'm gonna do is change the oil on it today okay um, and that's why we have this right here okay um, kawasaki rear cushion oil okay it's a um, I think it mentions it. It mentions it in the manual. I have the manual right here printed out for what we're going to be doing. So we're going to kind of do it by the book as much as possible. But when it, on the oil filling section, it says pour KHV10-K2C Kayaba. Okay. So this is a KHV10-K2C. Okay. This is the legit um oil this is very hard to find <laughs> by the way okay i think i probably bought the last one um so you can buy uh it says here you can buy uh, kayaba oil okay because this is manufactured by kyb kyb stands for kayaba okay there's the part number on there uh 45024-0002 okay and it comes in a one liter bottle i, I imagine this should be enough to service a whole shark okay uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, when I bought this, I bought it for the cool, the cool can. Okay, <laughs> there, um, you can still buy this oil from KYB. Okay, KYB still sells this. It's called KYB um, K2C. Okay, just this K2C right here. I think that that should be the right oil for for this shock. Okay, because it's a it's a KYB shock. Okay. Um, all right. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not going to go over disassembling the shock um, to get it to this point, okay? But I'll well, I'll quickly go over it. Just basically, you got to take. Um, oh yeah, so the reason that we're doing this is because I need to take this nut off so I can install this bumper, okay? The bump, the uh, the bump stop uh, was gone on this, okay? It had like deteriorated. It was missing, so I have to install a new one, and I cannot get this nut off unless I take. The whole shaft assembly out so that's so i figured hey you guys might as well do a, a shock service while we're at it okay um uh, so but basically to get it to the way it is right now is you would loosen these collars all the way down here i did it in, a, in the previous video okay um and then you would slip this collar off okay um you'd have to like get it loose enough where you can get it out i had to use a spring compressor to get it out because the spring is so long okay um, and then once you take this out, the spring will come out, okay? And this will be on it. The clevis will be on, okay? But I have to take the clevis out to, uh, to get this. Well, I have to change the clevis out because this is a KLX 140 clevis, by the way. <laughs> and, um, we had to, uh, take this nut out, but I can't get this nut out because the threads aren't long enough. The threads are actually longer on the KLX 140. Um, so I have to open this and we have to use the top nut in here to get this out so we can put the bumper in. Okay. Um, so the way I'll kind of show you, give you an idea how all this goes. So this is supposed to be in, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bumper is supposed to be in there. Okay. And it's supposed to sit on this. Okay. It sits on that just like that. It's made perfectly for it. Okay. And then there's this perch right here. I think it goes the other way. This perch on here, okay? When, when you loosen the spring, you can take this off like that, okay? And then you can take your spring out, okay? And then it's how, pretty much how it is. If you still have a good bumper, it should still be there, okay? And you really don't have to do anything else. But I gotta try to, I gotta try to get this shaft off so I can get this nut off, okay? Without, without damaging the shaft, obviously. <laughs> okay? it's, it's very, 
like it's very uh, you have to be very careful when working with this so if you scratch it or anything it may damage it so the I left the shock upside down for a few days okay like this to see if it was leaking oil because I did see oil come out I think if I pump this oil will come out of it I think it's, it's it's at the lowest setting right now the lowest dampening okay and uh, and yeah so you're gonna want to the first thing you're gonna want to do is let out all the nitrogen out of here okay you're gonna have to take it to a shop that has a nitrogen tank okay it, it, I'd already let it all out already if you don't it may explode okay so don't uh don't make sure you let the air out of this first all right and then uh, and then yeah so here we go so you're gonna need a uh, you're gonna need oil okay this KYB K2C or this Kawasaki branded oil right here in the cool bottle okay and then so we're just gonna go through the manual so the oil should, I'm, I'm just going to go step by step in the manual and we're going to do it. So, Hayes Mega has rebuilt a shock before. I think it was like a Showa shock off of DR650, okay? I've done this before and I do not like doing it. I would rather pay someone to do it, but it's very expensive to pay someone to do it. Um, the KLX140 doesn't tell you how to do it, but the KX100 does. So, that, you know, that leads me to believe like, hey, you know, this, uh, this bike was meant for racing and, you know, you're going to want to like service your shock like often so they say you're supposed to service your shock like every season or something okay but uh but i'm pretty sure this has probably probably never been serviced who knows <laughs> but so so they actually have a section in the manual that we can follow okay but the but this type of shock there's a general way of of servicing it okay um and it's pretty much the same but we're gonna go by the book okay by the book all right so uh so have at it all right so the first thing we got to do um so we got to get the shock in the way it is right now, okay? Uh, I'm not going to... I already kind of went over it a little bit. Um, if you want to see that video, check the previous video out for, for my KLX KX shock, shock swap. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is drain the oil, okay? The oil should be changed in the rear shock absorber at least once per racing season. See, I wasn't lying. The frequency for best performance must be based upon riding conditions and rider ability. So I guess if you, you know, if you're an awesome rider, you got to change it more often. Um, remove the following, the rear shock, okay? There's the rear shock. The rear shock spring, okay? The spring is right here, already off. Okay, and then point the reservoir away from you and slowly release the nitrogen gas, okay? So this this bladder here, okay, the bladder that's inside here, and we're going to take it out. You guys, you guys will get to look at, take a look at it. But the bladder in here is has 142 PSI. When, when it's properly inflated, it has 142 PSI of nitrogen in it, okay? So you do, you do not want to open this up while this is charged, okay? You, you absolutely do not want to do that, so... That is Hades Omega's little disclaimer there, okay? And then you just got to, um, you've got to uh, let all the air out slowly, right? So if it's 142 PSI, you probably want to open it slowly or else poof. And that's what they say, point it away from you. So like, you know, you don't get in it in your face or eye or whatever. So just open, open the valve with something. Okay, it's open, but nothing's coming out. Okay, so. There's definitely nothing in there. I, I know I, I emptied it before. So, Okay, so make sure there's no air in there or nitrogen. Okay, so that was the next step. Now, and it says, do not point the reservoir valve toward your face. Or, okay, yeah, just exactly what I was, was mentioning. When releasing the nitrogen gas pressure, an oil mist is often released with the nitrogen. So you should probably wear safety glasses when you're doing this. So let me go get, let me go get my safety glasses. Uh, I also want to point out if you're servicing the if you're just servicing the shock you're just changing the oil you don't need to take the clevis out okay but I, I did take it out for to do the swap okay um, okay so let's let's continue um, but the, yeah I'm going to I will be removing this nut and then adding the this guy okay so all this stuff should actually be on here already okay but if but mine was missing if yours doesn't have this Okay, buy a new one. You can buy. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll put a uh, this a link or I'll put a um, part number in the description of this video. If if you are missing this, you need this. Okay, keeps your shock from from bottoming out. 
all the way. <laughs> okay. Okay. The next step is adjust the compression dampening adjuster on the shock reservoir to the softest position. Remove the air bleeder bolt and pump the rear shock to drain oil out of the rear shock body. Okay. So the oil drain, the oil, oil draining or the bleed, the bleed bolt is right here. Okay. That's the one we got to take out. Um, also, what did it say? Oh, adjust it to the softest setting. Uh, well, there's nothing in there anymore, so I'm pretty sure <laughs> it should be fine. Have but... the clevis on there. Take a flathead screwdriver and turn this until it goes all the way soft. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Let's let's go three clicks. Okay, let's say it's it's right there. Okay, and then so you want it to be on the softest setting. So you want to turn it until it doesn't want to turn anymore. Okay, just like that. If this was on there. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, there's one more adjuster I forgot. There's this. Okay. This is the. Uh, I think this is the compression adjuster. Okay. So to put this on the softest setting. Okay. It says you have to put it on the on the lowest or softest setting. You this needs to point at 12 o'clock. Okay. So right now it's in the highest setting. Um, you'll see these mul these uh, kind of triangular marks here. Okay. And they get bigger. They either get bigger or smaller. Okay. So um, the one in the 12 o'clock position is the softest position, okay, or the lowest. So I will just gonna turn it counterclockwise, or I could just go clockwise too, until we get to the 12 o'clock position, okay, just like that. Okay, got it. All right, so there. So now we're ready to drain the oil. All right. Okay. Well, just in case any oil sprays out of there, make sure you got your safety glasses on. All right. Definitely, you definitely want to be wearing your safety glasses. When working with this okay so here we go um so we're gonna go also you want to make sure if you did take the clevis out that this little plunger thing doesn't go oh, 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 you don't lose it okay so the next step is to drain the oil so to drain the oil we're going it says to take this bolt out okay it requires a five millimeter um allen wrench type deal okay and here we go let me zoom in a little bit. okay here we go so probably I would hold it up first and make sure you don't look at it. Oh, see, I heard, I, oh, 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 oh. Okay. Some air did come out of it. This oil looks, yeah, this oil does not look like it's in good shape. Okay, and then, and then I want to tilt it upside down. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that oil is kind of needs to be changed. <laughs> I don't know what kind of oil they put in here previously. I don't know if this has been serviced or not. Okay, so to, uh, there is like no oil in here, man. Okay, so it says to pump this to get the oil out of it. Okay. Also, it would be if your shock is leaking, you probably want to change the seal in there. This shock is not leaking, so. Oh, it is gross. The, this definitely needed a service. There you go. Just make sure you hold it down and you keep on pumping it. This gets the majority of the oil out. why I hate doing this it's messy dude it stinks too <laughs> uh, also this oil is like a five weight okay and it sells bell ray can make um, makes it also I'll put a, um, a description in the video what um, what the type of oils it specifies okay if you can find some some kind of shock fluid make sure this is a shock fluid that you guys are using okay not a fork fluid fork oil and shock oil are different okay you want something made specifically for shock. So if you're buying something, make sure it has a picture of a shock on it and not a fork, okay? It's got to be around the five weight, okay? But I definitely, the KYB stuff is the, perf the, the stuff that you want to use, okay? Unless you're specifically tuning it, you know, with a heavier or lighter oil, you know? Okay, um, 
So I think that's the kind of majority of it right there. And now we're going to go open up the shock. All right. Okay, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of clean the top of the shock out, okay? Just because it's got this nasty oil all over it, and we're gonna go ahead and put the bolt back in for now, okay? So we don't make a mess, because we're gonna turn the shock over and we need to work on it, okay? Okay, so just remember what that oil looked like, okay? When that's the oil that came out of the shock, you'll see the oil that we put in the shock will probably be a lot cleaner. I don't know. Why. Okay, so the <laughs> next thing to do, okay, it says here, um, so we so we drained the oil out of the shock body, and then it, now it says to pry at the gaps in the stop, B and C, okay? So right here, B and C. So there's just these little holes that, that are on a cover, okay? So now this part, be very, very careful because I messed up a shock doing this. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, so. Okay, but it says here, pry at the gaps B and C, okay? In the stop with a suitable tool to free the top from the rear shock body, okay? So this is just kind of just pressed into here, okay? So I've got it on my vise upside down here and I'm using a kind of um, a terry cloth to hold the shock in so we don't damage it or anything all right so here we go so the hole that they're talking about are right here okay there's one right here and there's one on the other side should on the other side yeah there's one on the other side okay so you want to be careful not to you want to be careful not to to scratch the shaft okay so this if you stick something in here, it can go all the way here and it'll it could mess up the shaft. Okay, so do not do not mess that up. But you basically you want to pry on this, okay? That's what you want to do. And I don't think this is the proper tool. <laughs> Let me see if I can find. Probably what you want to use is like a small, very small screwdriver or something. Okay, I'm gonna try to um pry this cover off. He's is the most nervous about. Okay. You are gonna bang something in there to get this open. Make sure it doesn't hit the shaft. Okay, so I was able to get it, get it to open up. I had to use a air hammer. Use okay. an air hammer, okay, with the pointy tip here, okay, and be very careful not to drive it into the shaft. Okay, it's just a cover, okay. That's all it is. So when you get it open this far, you can probably just use a pry bar, okay, pry tool. Okay. Like I said, be very careful not to damage the shaft. This one was in there really good, man. Ooh, there's dirt in here. It's not good. Make sure I clean that before. Oh, yeah, before you open up the shock, make sure you clean it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, the cap is loose. Okay, so here's what's inside here. You're not going to be able to take the cap off totally, but there's a there's a shaft, and then there's a there's a bunch of dirt in there. So you're going to want to clean that out, okay? And like I said, whatever you do, don't damage the shaft. Okay. So I'm probably just gonna I'm gonna turn it upside down and take get all that dirt out of there. I don't know how that got in there. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it upside down and get all that dirt out of there. So when we open it, all that dirt doesn't come in there. Okay, so that's what we're working with right there. All right, I'm gonna go put this back on. Okay, so the next thing to do is take the seal assembly out. Okay, so inside here is a circlip. Okay, so you're gonna want to take that out. 
can probably take it out with a punch like this, okay? So right right here as I can see a circlip right here, okay? It's a little bit dirty. So I got a little ahead of myself. Okay. So the next step is to slide the stop up to the top of the push rod, then lightly tap around the seal. Uh, seal with a suitable rod and mallet. And push the seal assembly 10 millimeters down, okay? So the slide stop is this, okay? This rubber thingy here, okay? So you're gonna wanna push this down 10 millimeters is what they're saying, what they're saying, okay? So I'm gonna push it a little bit. Okay, so it moves independent of the shaft, okay? So you gotta get it, you gotta move it down in there so you can get the clip out of basically, okay? And there's a clip in there. Okay, so uh, now, so you can see the circlip is right here, okay? And so we need to get that out of that groove there, okay? And just be very careful not to scratch the shaft. I'm using this kind of punch tool to, to get it out. What a pain in the ass, dude. Okay. All right, I got it off. Woo. Did you get that? <laughs> Did you get that? Okay. Hold on, let me get this clip out. Okay. Woo. All right. Okay, so there it is. That's the that's the clip that comes out. All right. Uh, <laughs> so did you get that? Did you get that? All right. So what helped was having one of these small screwdrivers. Okay, and then driving it in with a hammer underneath, picking it up. Okay, and then and then I, I pried it like really hard, and then it just popped out. Okay, so I, I was having a really hard time with it. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of messed up the, the clip a little bit, but okay. Put that somewhere safe. And then now you can take a... So okay, so the last thing we did was remove the circlip. Now lightly move the push rod back and forth and pull out the push rod assembly, okay? Uh, I don't know why they say go back and forth, but yeah, we can do that. Basically, you can pull the whole assembly out now. Oh boy, this is tough. <laughs> this is why you paid the shops big bucks to do this. I feel like it's giving birth. Oh, you know what? You know what might help? is to take this bleed screw out, okay? Let's take this out, or at least loosen it. Okay, loosen that, and then maybe it'll come out better. It might hold it up right, or else it might, uh, it'll start leaking. It's giving birth, it's giving birth! Ah, there we go. Woo! There it is. 
All right, did you guys get that? <laughs> okay, you got that, right? <laughs> so there it is. There, this is the uh, shaft assembly right here, okay? Um, so normally what you would do is, uh, if, if the shock were leaking, you would change these seals, okay? But the seals are fine on this, okay? So it's not leaking at all, is what I want to say, okay? Hopefully this new fluid will be fine. Uh, this fluid is definitely... It's like metal, got metal chunks in it. Um, so the the main reason that I wanted to get this off was so we can get this nut off. Okay, so I'm going to try to take this nut off right now. Okay, we're going to take this daggone uh, bolt out. Oh, what, is, what size is this? It's like a 17. Or okay, so the top bolt is a 14 and the bottom is... Hopefully it doesn't op take the top bolt out. I don't think it will because the top bolt is like peened into place. Oh my god, it's so tight in there. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Whew. Finally, it started moving. It's so annoying, this little cap, it keeps on moving too. This thing was not easy. It's not. It's not one to come out so easily. We had to take take the shock apart just to get this out. I don't know why this thing was so hard to get out. Okay, but there we go. I think there's some kind of Loctite in it. Yeah. Looks like some of the threads got messed up. Ah, oh, that's probably what happened. Oh no, that's Loctite. Yeah, there's Loctite on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we got everything off. Uh, we're going to go, uh, well, we can take this out now. Okay, so we'll make sure you clean all the parts really well, okay? Oh, oh my God. It's nasty. I should have worn gloves, okay? So, yeah, this stuff is really nasty, especially if it's been in there for a while. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Let me go, uh, let me go wash my hands. <laughs> all right.